Hi, this is Connie Holland from Pixality Design, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use MindBody's branded web tool to get an interactive schedule on your Squarespace website. All right, so in this video, we're going to look at how to get the new MindBody branded web schedule widget onto your website. So I say new because in late 2017, MindBody redesigned their entire schedule widget. And this is what the new one looks like. It is really nice, it's very well designed. It's got a nice calendar view up top, which I know people have been asking about for a long time. So it's a really good improvement to the scheduling widget that they offer. Just to give you some contrast, this is the older one, which you're probably used to seeing on a lot of studio sites. If you had a schedule widget on your website prior to late 2017, it was this widget. So in this video, we're going to look at adding the new one on. So to get started, you're going to go log into your branded web manager, and you can do that at manager.healcode.com. And just a reminder, if your login information isn't working, that is a different login information account than your main MindBody account is. So you probably, you could have set up the same username and password, but it could also be different. So you'll want to check that as you're logging into the healcode.com site. Okay, so once you're in and you're successfully logged in, you're going to notice there's three things up top, and those are the three main categories of things that Branded Web can do. There's widgets, there's links, and there's site settings. For this video, we're going to stick with the widgets tab. So if you're not there already, click on widgets. And then we're going to come down and we're going to create new widget. So when you click that drop down menu, you'll see all the different types of widgets that MindBody offers you. So the one we're going to be using is called Schedule Widget. And again, that's for when you've got um, classes, a class-based type system where you've got more than one person can sign up for a certain class, you have recurring classes, they're built as a class structure in your MindBody account. That's, that's what we're talking about here today, and so that's why you're going to choose the schedule widget for that one. Just to run through these other widgets for you, the staff list widget I rarely use. I think it's better just to put that information straight on your website. The registration widget, that's what you're going to use when you are trying to put web, re, accept registrations on your site for something that's a one-time event. So a workshop, a camp, something like that that people are registering one time for. That would be via the registration widget. Prospect widget, I also don't use at all, really. The enrollment widget, um, I will use when it's something like a teacher training or a series of classes that you're especially someone signing up for that are more than just one time, they are going over like a six week period or something. That's where you'd use the enrollment widget. Class list widget, again, I don't use that one. I think that information's better just put right on your website. And the appointment widget I sometimes use depending on the business, and that would be if you're offering one-to-one -one appointments, so like massages or uh, personal training or private yoga, something like that. You would use, you could use an appointment widget to set that up on your website as well. That's not my favorite widget. It doesn't work really smoothly all the time, but it is available for you if you want to try using that and see how it works. Okay, so both for today, we're going to use the schedule widget. All right, so here is your schedule widget building page. So on the left, you'll see all the different things that you can edit to change how this widget looks. And on the right, this is the preview of how your widget is going to look on your website. So let's go through some of the things that you can change here. The first is the theme, and you have two main options. You can choose a spacious theme or a compact theme. And you'll see when I change it to compact that some of this information just compresses up in there. So spacious moves it out and it actually gives like the, the category of the class on there, the type of class on there. Um, for most of my the websites I build, I go with the compact just so that the web page doesn't get really, really long. If you are a smaller studio and you don't have that many classes, you might want to go with the spacious. Or if some of this information is really important that your clients see right off the bat, you can keep it with spacious. But that's just up to you. For color scheme, remember in a previous video, I told you to write down the hex code colors of your brand colors. That's going to come in handy here because you're going to type in what that six-digit code is for your primary and your secondary brand colors. 
um, go ahead and just put them in right now. You can always come back and you know flip them around if you want, change the colors if you want, if you want them to look different. Right now, I'm just going to keep both of these as our brand green. And the background color, FFF, FFF, which is what it defaults to, is white. So we're going to keep that as is. If your website background is a different color, you might want to think about changing that background also. Font, I encourage you just to keep it as your site's default. That's going to take over the values that are set on your main website, and then it'll match very nicely. So I would keep that just the way it is. We then have some options with the button. So the text on the button is the first thing. Right now we have it set to book. You can see over here it just says book. We could also choose sign up if we wanted to say that, or reserve, enroll, register. We can even add our custom text if we have some kind of branded term that we want to use in there and, and make it sound different. We can add that in right there. And then there's the styles of the buttons. This is the classic style that just looks like a nice text link over here. If we go embellished, it's going to make it look like a button. Further, we can change it to a solid button if we want to or keep it outlined. We'll make it change like that and then you can change the radius just by dragging that over and you can make it a rounded button. So I would just go and match whatever the rest of the buttons on your website um, are for these stylings. So we're going to keep it like that for this one. Next up is the content tab. So once you expand that you can see all your choices there. So this is what you're choosing is going to display over here. So right now we've got the staff up at the top right there and that's selected right there. And then the additional info, this is the stuff that's going to drop down when we click this view details, the stuff that's going to drop down there. So right now we have it selected to staff bio and session description. You could also choose to dis display the staff photo if you have those loaded in your MindBody account, a room if you've got different rooms in your facility, and business contact information if you want to do that. That's maybe handy if you have more than one location as well. But you can play around with um, those types of information. Just a general good default is a basic class description and then possibly the instructor or not. Um, I would at least do a basic class description unless you only have one type of class. Um, and then you can go down and choose the date range. So whether you want to display a full week's worth of classes or just a single day. Now that might come in handy if you're using um, a schedule widget on your home page um, you can have more than one schedule widget so if you're creating a schedule widget just for your home page and you want to just highlight those days classes then you could choose day and it'll only pull in the that day's classes for that widget um, for a main website scheduling page you'll want to keep it at a week date, date range so they they show out um, the next week in front of them and then start date for most of you you're going to keep it as show classes starting today if you've got an active website this would be something you would want to select the show classes starting on a future date if say your grand opening was like two months from now and you wanted to set that so that they didn't have to somebody visiting your site now didn't have to scroll through two months to see any classes showing up at all so you can set that um, if that's the case if you're pre-launching your website in advance of your grand opening filters is next and this is just simply selecting what is going to be an option at the top of your website or at the top of your widget for your clients to be able to filter through. So we can go through and choose whether we want, you know, the class filter to be there, the staff filter to be there, class type. We can add the rooms um, and you can select four of those. So if those are important things for you, add them into the filter as an option. If they're not important, then uncheck them and then it'll just clean up your widget even more. I, I have not seen a whole lot of people actually go in and filter through this way. It's, it's kind of a subtle part of the widget, so I wouldn't worry about this a whole lot. People are mostly just going to flip through um, by dates and um, to find the classes that they want to do. And then the last option you have is region. So you can select your language or you can select whether it's a clock 12 hour or 24 hour. So once you've got all those settings set and you like the way it looks and you, it's got the pertinent information for your business, just click the orange save button. And then you're going to come to the deploy page. So if you're on WordPress, you can install this plugin to use it on your WordPress website. But I'm going to show you the Squarespace way today, which is a simple copy paste. So you're going to click copy to clipboard and then you're going to head over to your website. And I'm going to just scroll down to the not link section. I'm going to create a new page. And I'm going to name this demo. You'll name yours whatever you want to. And click start editing. And then when you're on the page you want to drop that widget into. I'm going to hover over and find an insertion point. 
click that and then I'm going to go down and I'm looking for the code block. So it's in the more section down here in between the map and the menu. So I'm going to click code block to add a code block. And I'm going to delete the hello world, which is just placeholder. And I'm going to paste that script. That's command B on a Mac as a shortcut for that. Or you can right click uh, paste if you've got the right click enabled on your mouse. So we've got that script in there. We're just going to hit apply and click save. And there you have it. There's our new widget for our schedule on our website. So if you go back to branded web and you want to edit that widget, you just go back up to widgets. You find the widget name that you've got on there. You can go in and you can edit any of those things we were talking about before. You only need to post the paste that code one time on your website. So once you've done this one time with the code block, you can go back and edit the way that widget, widget works as many times as you want and it's going to update automatically into your website. It's also going to pull in information from edits and changes that you make to your MindBody account. So say you go and you need to cancel this class. So you go into MindBody and you cancel that class, it's going to automatically show canceled on your website. So that's a pretty handy thing to have. You don't have to go updating your website every time something changes. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers the new schedule widget. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below this video. And um, I will be back next time with a tutorial on how to put buttons and purchase links on your website. So you can get that embedded as well. So until next time, thanks. Bye.